where about this night is called the Rechina Skamakayana. It's a famous sigil that uh, all the yeshivas are afraid of. <laughs> so it's going to take us from, from today until Friday. That's why they're afraid of it. Uh, it's because it's it's really the basis of all Tuma and Tara. And, uh, all, all, everything is in here. Anything you want to know about Tuma and Tara is really all in this. Uh, purity and impurity. So we begin like this. Uh, I'll explain the background of what we need to know as, as we go along. It starts off, we're starting at the Mishnah. Yudalad, Amir Aleph. Five lines from the top. Rabbi Chanina Skamakayin and Maimer. Rabbi Chanina Skamakayin says, "Mimem shall kayinim, all the days of the kayinim, leinim dem milisir pesa basar shnitma bevladatama, and basar shnitma beavatama. Afu pishim is even tamal tamasa." They said that if there was meat that was one level of tama, and that needed to be burnt because it was tamei and it was kachim, that's tamei. So they would burn it together with meat that was on a different level of tummy. Now, even though when they put the two together to burn, one tummy piece of meat would be metama, the other piece of meat, because it was a higher level of tummy. It was a stronger tummy. But the details here go like this. I have basar shenitma bivlaka tumma. So I just put a stack here. Um, let's set this up. This would be the red of the avaisatama, let's say. This would be like a mace, okay? This is called the avatama, the, the orange. This would be like a sheret or something that touched the mace. This would be an avatama. Then I have um, like a yeah, orange white over here. This is a, um, a rishan, it's called the vlad, rishan. Then I have a shani, and then I put shlishi ravi. Please review, don't always, uh, uh, don't always happen. Chuma kachim. Okay, so the first step is we have basar that's nitma bevlada tuma. So the vlada tuma means right here. That's the vlad. And this is the nitma bevlada tuma, which means it's a shani. Nitma bevlada. It it's a shani. It's this one over here. And what would they burn it together with? Yama basar shnitma beavatama. This was the avatama, remember? And they would burn it together with this. This is a via voice. Like a mace. Uh, Avi Avaisatam is a grandfather of Tama. I know a sheritz is just an av. A mace is a higher level. So someone that touches a mace and a sheritz are the same um, same plane. A sheritz would be an av, right? And this we're talking. I'm sorry? Yeah. A sheritz and someone that touches a mace is the same level of Tama. The mace itself is a higher level. Okay, so we're dealing with meat that was on a, uh, a shiny level that's being burned together with meat that's on a rishan level. Um, what happens to the shiny when it's burned together with the rishan? It becomes a shiny. Well, it was a shiny. So the Gemara's going to ask, well, what are you, what's the big deal? You know, the worst it can get is, is the status that it's on. You can't get this, the, uh, the, I have meat that's a shame. Uh -huh. No, I, I need something else. Yeah. So I have meat that's on the, that's, on, that's the shame. And I have meat that's a reason and I'm burning them together. Now the Gemara is going to ask, well, when the reason touches the shame, so it just makes it into a shame, which what it was anyway. Right. That's the first first step of me. Rabbi Kiva added and he said, Mimem shall Similar story to what we had from Rabbi Khanina Skanakayanim. Rabbi Khanina Skanakayan means that he was the um uh, I guess the Sagan Kayan Gadol, or maybe maybe it means that he was a uh, he was just like a gabai of the kind of, or maybe it's a skunk kind of. So, what does Rabbi Kiva add? He says, Shemen shenifsal betvul yain. Betvul yain is someone that went to the mikveh 
but he needs to wait for nightfall to be fully pure. If he touches something, he's con he himself is considered a shaming. So now, no, shaman. They would, you see, when it comes to truma, um, we have a rule that if truma, if oil of truma becomes tame, you're allowed to burn it uh, as a lamp. You don't have to destroy it the way you would destroy um, it's yeah, You don't have to destroy it the way you would destroy shemen of a mincha that became tame, that you have to burn it, the base of so base of, and whatever. Um, you have to burn it somewhere else. No, over here, I'm allowed to burn it. Uh, okay, so I'm burning, I'm, I'm lighting this, I'm using this shaman as fuel. This shaman is nifsal betful yoyin. The word nifsal means tame, but it's, when I say nifsal, I mean that it's the type of tame that it can't give over to anyone else. So this shaman is considered a shlishi. That's the limit to how far truma can go. It can... Shum is only sensitive till a shlishi. Once after a shlishi, it doesn't. So it's this shemen is a shlishi. Why? Because it was nifsal betvul yoyim. Betvul yoyim is considered a sheni. There's other possibilities of betvul yoyim. Um, for example, a yeledes after the, uh, a woman that gives birth after she goes to the mikvah until um, the forty days or until the um, 40 days and the uh, 80 days, all of that time she's considered a to William and develop him. Okay. So we know what the oil is. With the lamp that was tame because it touched something that touched the mace. Okay, so here's the mace. Here's the tame mace. Here's um, the nair. So the nair is now a rishon. Am I correct? Yeah, the nair is a rishon. And my shaman touched the tvilyayim. So my shaman is a shlishi. Now, this is a very good, this is an easy chiddush. I mean, this is, that, the question is why, but the chiddush is there. I, here I have uh, oil that's a shlishi. Can you see that? Oil that's a shlishi. And I'm burning it with, with a lamp, in the lamp that's a rishon. That means that when this oil touches the rishon, it becomes a shani. So it's increasing its tumma. But because I'm burning it, we say, oh, don't worry about it. Well, it's it's going up one level. because Yeah, the shlishi is going to turn into a shani, which is a problem because you're not supposed to be matam. No, rishon doesn't go down. It stays there. Yeah, the way you know, like um, with uh, with illness, Pastor Shalom always afraid of germs, but with health, it doesn't say, "Oh, give me the healthy germs." It doesn't work like that. <laughs> it only becomes tummy. It doesn't become uh, okay. So okay, so now we have two statements, Rabbi Chinnis and we have Rabbi Akiva. Both of them are attempting to tell us that you can increase tumma when you're burning it. Amar Rab Meir, Rab Meir says, from the words we learned, you're wondering what this had to do with Tzachim. So Rab Meir tells us that from their words, Kamar is going to discuss whose words, Rab Chanina, Rab Meir, or maybe it's not either of them, that uh, you can burn Shumat Tahira Bepesach. Why? Because when it comes to the sixth hour, which is the, the Zman Yisr, Midr Abanan, the seventh is Midr Aisa, but even when it's the Zman Yisr, Midr Abanan, I view it all as, even though it's Tahar, I view it that it's Tameh, because it, it's the time for it to be burnt, and I can burn it together with Shumat Tameh. So just like I was able to burn two levels of Tumat together, when it becomes the Zman Yisr of Chametz, Midr Abanan, I can burn it together with something that's Tameh. It doesn't really become tummy, it just becomes usr. Right. And and they are saying Lamadno that you're able to do this. Sigma is gonna challenge uh, what's what's the what's the hechra? It's nothing to do with tumma. Okay. Uh Amar Rabbi Yaisi Yamida. Rabbi Yaisi says that's not um, it's not correct. Ene Yamida, that's not how it works. 
Maidim Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Yeshua, Shosartim Zulatzma, Zulatzma. Really, Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua would agree. Where did they come in from? I don't know. They just popped up over here. The Gemara is going to say that maybe when Rabbi Meir was saying the Debreim, he was actually referring to the, further, this, this statement of Rabbi Lezer and, and Rabbi Yeshua. He wasn't referring to Rabbi Shemina and Rabbi. We'll see. We'll see in the Gemara. So they both agree, according to Rabbi Yaisi, that Sarkin Zulatma was Zulatma, that you have to burn them separately. Tumeya and Tahira. Alman Echlika? Any Amida mean that's that's not uh, the measurement, that's not correct. You can't learn this from there. So what is the machlaikis? Alman Echliko, alatuya valatmeya. If one is possibly tame, it's called tuluya. It's a suffix dangling, right? It's in the middle. You're not sure if it's tame or tame. That over there, Rabbi Eliezer says that it's you have to view it as tahar and you have to burn them separately. Rabbi Shua says it's more lenient, says you can burn them both together. Okay, so the Rabbi Shua says it's more lenient, says you can burn them both together. Okay, that was the hard part, by the way. Take the rest of the day off. <laughs> um, Rabbi Eliezer says Tluya. Sorry, no, I want to do it now. Yeah, the, the thing is that Rabbi Hanina didn't mention uh, anything about Tluya. Yeah, but when they are. He's saying, you see, what do we do with the suffix? That's going to be. A... They were talking about that it's definitely tame, but which level is it? Here it's a suffix, it may be perfectly tar. says It means let's see. We're going back to the case of Rabbi Hanina Skanakayan, where we said you, we were going to burn a Shani together with the Rishan. Okay, what was his words? Basar Shanitma, the Vladatama. Basar Shanitma, the Vladatama. A Basar that became Tami because of a Vlad. Vlad means it's a Rishan, which means that it's now a Shani, because Basar Shenitma Vlad Atama. We're going to burn Shani meat together with Basar that's Nitma Ba'avatam, which means it's a Rishan. We're going to burn a Shani with the Rishan. On our chart, it was right here. We're going to burn something that, that's on the green level together with the mixture of uh, orange and white. All right. This is that we're going back to discuss. This is Rabbi Chinin Skanaka in this case. All right. So the Gemara asks, Basar Shnitma Bavladatama Mayhavi, what level is Basar Shnitma Bavladatama? It touched a, a first level Tama, that means it's a second level. That means it's, a, it's called a Shani. Shani. Kisarfle Bahadi Basar Shnitma Bavladatama Mayhavi, when you burn it together with meat that, that touched the Nabatama. So that makes it into a Rishan. That was this, this level here is a Rishan. So, this lower level of Tama touched this level of Tama, these two. Yes, cor correct. It was touched once, that's how it became this level. And now you're putting it back to retouch. So the Gemara asks, My hobby, Shani. It becomes a Shani. Shani it's a Shani it's a, it's a, it's a, it was a Shani and it's becoming a Shani. Exactly the way Yossi explained it. That, how did it become a shani? Because it touched it once. So what's the problem? You're touching it again? It, you're not increasing tuma. My mysifli tamal tamasa yika. What are you telling me that you're allowed to increase tuma? Afal pisha mysifin tamal tamasa was Rabbi Chanina Skanakainim's language. Even though you're increasing tuma, you're not increasing tuma. It's at that level. Uh, yes, you got a um, uh, some sort of trophy from me. <laughs> okay. Amar Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda response. Rav Yehuda is, uh, is an Amira, right? Second generation Amira, student of Rav and Shmuel. Hacha bevlad, vlad askin and dahavali shlishi. Rav Yehuda adjusts the Mishnah a little bit to make it fit. Because here we're dealing with not a vlad atama. Not something that touched the vlad atama. Something that touched the vlad, vlad atama. Sometimes you say, you know, like... Uh, my children, and you're referring to the grandchildren, you know, the whole thing together. So this is a vlada tumma. Yeah, it's an offshoot of tumma. But it doesn't mean 
it doesn't mean that it's actually that level of Arishan. It meant that it was a Vlad Vlad the same. Now, what does that tell me? So here I had something that was on the level of Arishan, right? Level of Arishan. And I have something that's now at a level of a Shlishi. So now when it touches the Arishan, it becomes a Shlishi. So now it fits. So the Havala Shlishi, Ukasavar, Shlishi Matalasa Sisheni. That once it's a Shlishi, when you're burning it, you're allowed to make it into a shame. Okay, now the Gemara uh, has this challenge here. Right, because you shouldn't make it tummy, and it's at a level of tama that's lower than this. So Rabbi Hanim Skanakanim says, no, once it's tummy, it's tummy. You're burning it anyway. Okay. Chumen Kachin, you know that it makes tummy. Right, right, right. So because this is actually dealing with meat from Kavanos. Oh, it's Kachin. The Gemara says, one second. Now we ask a very, very basic question. Um, it's questioning the, 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 the premise of all of these levels here. It says, But food can't make food tummy. The Tanya was taught in a brisa. Maybe food can make food tummy. Tamalaim Rabbachit and Rabbachitan. Mayim al Zara, but not only Nivlasim alav. Tam mayhu. If water falls on grain and it falls from a, uh, a carcass on it, it becomes tummy. Who tummy? Bein Isaacates by tummy. It becomes tummy. Only this food that touched the Nivela becomes tummy. Or it's not a Nivela, I think it's a Sheritz over there. That touches a Sheritz becomes tummy. But the food can't make other food tummy. The Gemara says, Hani, That limud that says that food can't make food tummy would be would still fit with our Mishnah because Abaya learns that that's only talking about chulim. And here we're talking about kachim. And by kachim, food can make other food tummy and then everything would fit now. What's the difference? Chulim means food that's not sacrificial. Uh, Food. It's not, it doesn't have sanctity, and and kachim does have sanctity. So when it comes to the the kachim, so food will make other food tummy, but by chulin it won't. So you're right by chulin, but that has nothing to do with us. Avul chuma v'kachim isakets, but when it comes to chuma kachim, it could make one food could make other food tummy. So then we get what's going on here that we're burning it together, even though it's making it tummy. Ula ravad the barav mishmei the rava nami, and according to ravad the barav in the name of rava. He also says, Rabbi Chanina Skanakainam was talking about Kachim. So Ravada Barava holds that one level up. He says, You're right, that food can't make other food tummy. Food touching food doesn't make a tummy. It has to go to the original, to the Sheretz, to make a tummy. But that's only by Chulin and Truma. But by Kachim, it can. We're dealing with Kachim. So therefore, we still have this whole um, uh, the grade, this, uh, all the grades of Tuma will apply to what we're talking about. El Ravina Mishmei the Rava, but according to Ravina, in the name of Rava, Dame Mikra Maladi Brakas of Leishna Chulim, Leishna Chum, Leishna Kachim, Ina Isaka. It's by Maya Kalameima. According to Ravina, the name of Rava, says it doesn't matter Chulim, Chuma, Kachim, never does food make other food tummy. So what are we dealing with here? Be right, so what can you say, Michael? And what is it to say, which means what are we dealing with here? You're putting food together with other food, it can't make a tummy anyway. The Kamara says, mm-hmm. It only says that food doesn't make food tummy, but liquid could make food tummy. So it sort of like goes back and forth. It goes food to the liquid, liquid to the food, and then food to the liquid. So you do have all of these grades of uh, these levels of tumma, but there has to be mashkin in the middle. Now, mashkin over here doesn't mean that mashkin makes it wet. That's what we always learn, that if mashkin, if liquid is there, it makes it wet and it makes it susceptible to tumma. That's not what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with, not that it needs to become susceptible to tumma, we're dealing with that it needs to pass over to mashkin in order to go to the next level of tumma. And uh, this intermediate, that it, the Gemara says, Yihachi, the Gemara doesn't want to accept this. He says, if that's the case, 
So why did he say, why did Rabbi Hanim Skanakainim say that they would burn meat that was nitma bevladatama with meat that was nitma beavatama? He should have said, in basar umashkin mi They would burn it together with meat and liquid that was nitma beavatama. Otherwise, it's not going to pass the tama over. <coughs> you may be right. You may be right. There's different shitas over here. You may be right. But all of that is only in, on the Daraisa level. When it comes to the, the, the Rabbanan level, then Eichel is Mitami Eichel. And so therefore, all of these levels of Tuma do apply mid Rabbanan. The question is, do they apply mid Daraisa? That's a big machlaikis. But mid Rabbanan, they're all going to apply. So what Bichnin Skanakarinim is telling us is that according to those shitas, at least, it's, it's um, Tamei, there's a, it's going to increase in its tumma on a rabbinic level. And nevertheless, they would, they would burn it again. Okay. Hey, so if, yeah, yes. So the question is, is it, what's the prohibition of making truma tumma? Is the prohibition that you have to keep it sanctity, or no matter what, or is it that you can't spoil it from being eaten? If, if, if the issue is just to spoil it from being eaten, so it's spoiled anyway. So it's anyways for the, for the not the garbage, it has to be burnt, right? But if you have to keep it sanctity, so then just because you can't eat it doesn't mean that you go and make it more time. You know, I have to keep it sanctity. So, so if that's the case, so this is a chiddush here. Nevertheless, because I'm burning it, I'm still allowed to, to, to overlook that sanctity. Rabbi Akiva adds, the Rabbi Akiva adds, it says all the days of the Kayanim, they did not refrain from, from uh, burning oil of truma in a lamp that oil of truma that became tummy in a lamp that was more tummy. What were the levels here? The oil was at a level of a shlishi and the lamp was at a level of a rishon. Why? Because it touched someone that touched the dead person. So the uh, the avia vice, the avat the uh, the uh, avatama is the person that touched the avia vice, and. So here's the my level. No, my that's um, that's the person that touched the lamp. So the lamp is now on this level, which is a rishon, and the oil was down here is a shlishi, a shlishi with a, a shlishi with a rishon. Go like this. Shlishi with a rishon would make it. Shlishi with a rishon would make it. It would go up to being a shame. Okay. Where says michti? Shemen shenifsal b'tvul yai mai havi. What is the status? What level is oil that touched the Tvil Yayim? Someone that went to the mikveh and is waiting for nightfall, or the woman that went to the mikveh and is waiting for the 80th day, or the, or the, or the um, 40th day. So it touches something, whatever that, that person touches something, that, that, that person, that woman, is a, is a level of a shani, so what they touch becomes a shlishi. The when you burn it together with a nair that was with a lamp that was tummy because it touched the tummy mace, so it becomes a shani. My kamash malan. What's Rabbi Kiva adding? Shlishi matlasis a shani. I know how. Based on the previous gemara, you can't skip in this gemara. Based on the previous gemara, we also had uh, we had a shani that was being burnt with the rishon. The Gemara comes along and says, Shani with the Rishan, you're just retouching the same thing that it touched before, like Yossi put it. You know, it's not, so we, Rabbi Yehuda came along and said, no, it's not a Shani with the Rishan, it's a Vlad Vlad, it's a Shlishi that touches the Rishan and you're making it into a Shani. Ah, oh, that's the Chiddush of Rabbi Chanin Skanakayana. Comes on Rabbi Kiva and says, a Shlishi, you can burn together with the Rishan, you can, you can uh, put in a Rishan lamb and it's going to become a Shani. So we said, based on the last answer, Rabbi Kiva is just saying the same thing Rabbi Chanin Skanakayanam said. A shlishi with the reason. And you take it up one level to a shame. So Gemara says, Hai nuha. this is that. It's the same thing. You're saying, Haisif Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Kiva had a big chedesh. There's no chedesh. It's the same thing that we had before. 
Amar Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda comes back to save us. He uh, answered the last one. Hacha b'ner shom atezas askinan, rachmana Amar, v'chalal cherev, cherev arayu kachal al v'abal e'avatama. Very interesting cherev. We have to readjust what we're talking about. We said, we said that what touched, what was to me mace, we said that this was the mace, the level of the mace was called avia vice. We have the level of what touches the mace, which is called an avatama. And then we're dealing now with the, with the rishan. Why? Because we were assuming that it was going to work by, by grades, by level. Now, there's an exception to that. The exception is that when you deal with metal, then metal takes the status of the original. So in other words, the sword that was used to kill the person is not considered an avatama. It's considered an aviyavaisatama. Cherev hareo kechalal. The chalal is the, is, the, is the corpse. And the cherev, the sword, has the same level as the corpse. Now, based on that, we say the same thing applies to an avatama. And a sword that touches an avatama doesn't become a rishon, it becomes an av. So here, what we're saying is, it's not necessarily a sword. Here, we're saying that it's a, a metal lamp, anything metal. A metal lamp that touched an avatama, instead of being a rishon, becomes an av itself. So now, oh, this is a big chiddush. Because now I had shlishi oil. That's down over here, shlishi oil. And instead of saying that it's, you're burning it in a lamp of a, of a rishon, you're burning it in a lamp that's an av, which is going to make the oil not a shani, but it's going to make the oil a rishon, which is a chiddush over a bichlina So the sword um, yeah, the problem yeah, it's only with the app. The, the reason why it doesn't go further is because a Rishan can't yeah. make a Kaylee comment. A Rishan can only, well, after this level, after the Ava Tuma, after the, once it come, becomes a Rishan, it can't go back to Kaylee. It only, it, it's only with food. Even with food, we just said it wasn't so clear. But, um, but yeah, the, the higher levels are Kalim, and then it, once it becomes the blood, they can't go into back to Kalim. Okay, we're on the second line on Yudalid, Amit Beis. The Kasavar Shlishi Mutalasa We're learning that uh, you can make a Shlishi into a Rishan, not just the Shane. Okay. The Gemara says, Am I Duchke the Rabbi Yudal Lutmi Beneshama Tafa? What is compelling Rav Yehuda, my duchke? What's pushing him? What's compelling him to say that we're dealing with the ner shel that we're dealing with an, uh, a lamp that's made out of metal? Not maybe ner shel cheres. Say we're dealing with the ner shel cheres, just an earthenware lamp. Now, what, what, what would that be? That would be a rishon, not an avatam. Umay ha'isif, when we said that he's adding, we were looking for adding in an in increase of tuma. So we wanted to go up a level. That's, but what? But it's possible that that's not what he meant when he says that he's Hosef Rabbi Akiva. The Lohasam over there by by Rabbi Chinina Skanakayanim, there were two pieces of meat. Over there it was Tame Vitame. One piece of meat was a Shlishi, a third level. One piece of meat was a Rishan, a first level. And when they would touch, the Shlishi would become a Shani, would increase. The Iluhacha, but over here, Pasal Vitame. I have a shlishi, which is the oil, and I have a, and I have the lamp, which is a rishon. And yes, it's going to become a sheni. Everything is the same. So what is he being meisif? He's being meisif that over there I was dealing with kachim. In the status of meat, that's a shlishi. By kachim, by sacrificial meat, that status is called is called tame. Why? Because if that meat touches other meat, that that meat would become this the next level of meat would be a ravi. So therefore the shlishi is called tame, not pasal. The difference between tame and pasal is pasal means that it doesn't uh, give off the tama. It just uh, it just has it. However, by us, we're dealing with truma, we're dealing with oil. Oil has to be the oil that we're burning in a lamp has to be truma oil. It can't be kachim 
kachim oil. That has to be burnt outside, it can, and it can't be used as a lamp. So we're dealing with chuma oil. Chuma, that's a shlishi, doesn't doesn't give off to anything else. So therefore, its status is not called tame. Its status is called pasal. So here, what we're doing is we're making something that used to be pasal. We're we're making it we're making it tame. We're making it upper level to a to a sheni. Now I know Rabbi Chinin Sakhakainim was also taking a shlishi and making it into a sheni, but his shlishi was tame. Ma, uh, this shlishi, Rabbi Akiva's shlishi, is only pasal. So the the Haisif Rabbi Akiva is taking it from a level of pasal to a to a level of uh, of tame. In other words, this question is. Why do you have to tell me that we're dealing with a ner shel mateches? Were you taking it up to a level of a rishi? You don't have to say that. Could be you're taking it up to a level of a sheni, but the haisif is a different. It's a different uh, aspect. Amar Rava, Rava says maslisin kushisi. What compelled Rabbi Yehuda to say that we're dealing with a, a lamp that was metal, and we're actually increasing in tumma itself, we're taking it from a shlishi to a rishi instead of to a sheni. Is because the Mishnah said something difficult. My area, the Tani Ner Shnitma Batami Mace. Why do you have to tell me about a, a lamp that touched the, uh, uh, someone that was Tami from a corpse? Nisni Shnitma Basharetz. Look. Someone that touches a corpse, this is the corpse. Someone that touches a corpse is this level, one level down. This level is called the Avatar Mama. And the rules of Cherev Hareo Kachalal, that metal takes on the same level of what it touches is only by tumor that comes from a corpse. So it has to originate from a corpse. And then he touched the corpse and then But however, this level of tumor is also a sheriff. So if you wanted to tell me something was a, a sheriff is dead, a dead uh, creature, little creature. Yeah, eight, right, right. So, so both someone that touches a corpse and a sheritz have the same level tuma, but there's a difference between them. That if someone that touches the, the person that touched the corpse, if he touches something metal, the metal takes the same status that he has. And some and if metal touches the sheritz, it goes a level down. The sword, this halacha of a sword taking on the is only by the corpse. So why did we have to, if we're just talking about a rishon? Now you're talking about let's say an earthenware lamb. So there's no cherver kechal. Then why do you have to say you touched the tamei mace? Say you touched the sheretz. That would probably be more common. The shrotzim. So why do you have to? Oh, you told me a tamei mace. It's probably because you're trying to tell me that we're dealing with cherver kechal because that's the halacha that applies specifically to tamei mace, and that's why we're dealing with the metal lamp. Okay. What would be a distinction between tamei mace and the sheretz? You say this is metal. So we're dealing with a metal lamp, not a uh, earthen metal lamp. I'm a Rava. Rava says, Shmamina Kasava Rabbi Akiva. We see from here that Rabbi Akiva holds Tumas Mashkin, Latami Acherem de Raisa. That's contradictory, what we said before. I'm not sure. Before we said, in order to resolve an issue, if there was a tumor that went from Eichel to Eichel, we said that it went from Eichel to Mashkin. Okay, I'm not sure. We'll have to see later in the Gemara. But apparently, there are opinions that hold that Mashkin liquids can't make food tummy, midday rice. But obviously, according to Rabbi Akiva, it does. It does make a tummy, midday rice. These Alkadai Tachterabanon. If we would say that mashkin can only make liquid tummy, mashkin can only make liquid, can only make food tummy midrabana and michti. Let's see. Hi, Nair, Micah Mahanya Lahai Shemin. What is this lamp doing to this oil? Elef Sule Gufe, if it's just making the oil puzzle, because oil, let's say, can't make anything else tummy. A puzzle bakai, it was puzzle already. Let's see if we would take a hold. That mashkin doesn't make any food coming. So then, what are you increasing here? It's a, it's anyways possible. Well, I'm increasing the level. 
The Gemara says one second. Mimai, how does he, how, how does he, what's Rabbi telling me? Rabbi's telling me that Rabbi Akiva holds that Mashkin needs to be able to be Metami, other things, Midair Isa. Or else, what are you causing to this, uh, to this Mashkin by burning it in this lamp? It was anyways, uh, it anyways can't make anything Tame, but it's Tame. And now you're burning it in a lamp. It's Tame anyway, and it can't make anything else Tame. So what are you doing? It must be that it could make other things Tame. And the fact that it could make other things Tame means that when you increase its level, it could make other things more Tame. It could make other things Tame. Where it says me my, how did, why is Rav even asking this? There's no, um, or why is he saying that this is a proof that Rabbi Akiva holds that it has to work? Maybe Rabbi Akiva is just telling you that it makes things tummy midirabanan. You have no proof of that this is the Raisa level or the Rabbanan level. Akiva says, no, you do. If we would be dealing with the Rabbanan, my area, the Abatam, why would you have to tell me that Mashkin touches an Avatama? And it's becoming a reason. Okay, uh, sort of throws at us something that we learned in the Sefta Shabbos. We had a, um, uh, from the, the, these Xeris that they made in the attic of Shmina Sadava, Shagazru, Balias, remember in the attic? Ananya ben Gurion. He was in an attic, and there, there was more students of Beishamai there than Beishilel, and there were 18 things that they uh, they made decrees on. One of those things was that anything that's tummy that touches liquid, the liquid automatically goes back to being a rishon, even if the thing that was tummy was a shani or shlishi or whatever. Anything that could passel, oh, anything that could passel chuma. Anything, even if it was a shani that touched liquid, the liquid instead of becoming a shlishi goes back to being a rishon. Why did that? Why did they? Uh, why did they do that? Why did they? It's like the uh, shoots and ladders. Why did they jump levels just like that? So um, they said because there is liquid that's a rishon, that's mashkin of a zav. The fluids that come out of the zav are, are uh, considered a rishon. And so therefore, they consider all liquids a reason. That was the that they made. So if we're dealing with, it becomes a reason. So if we're dealing with Tumma Midirabanan, because liquid can make things tummy only Midirabanan, and that's what Rabbi Kiv is talking about, that there's Tumma Midirabanan, it's Tumma Midirabanan, then why did you have to give me an example? That, why did you have to tell me that it's going to be burnt in a lamp? It doesn't matter. Anything that it touches makes it into a rishi. I don't even know how. But, yeah, well, how did it become a shlishi? It should automatically be a rishi. But the Gemara doesn't ask it like that. The Gemara is asking, my area, the abatama, feel a rishi and rishi nami. Even if it touched the rishi and shani, it automatically it becomes a tchila. Tchila means it goes back to being a rishi. So elas mami not there. I see. It must be that we're not dealing with gazeris there abanan here. We're dealing with so Shmamina, that's what Rabbi Akiva's uh, opinion is, is that Mashkin can make other food tummy midairaisa. And therefore, when I burn it in the lamp, I'm increasing its level of tumma to be able to be metama other thing, midairaisa. Okay. Amar Rab Meir, the third uh, step of the Mishnah. Rab Meir, he came along and he said, oh, from their words, I'm able to learn that you can burn Truma Tahira with Tmeya on Erev Pesach. Goes like this. But the Vrayim Deman, whose words teach us this? We'll say the words of Rebbe Chanin Skanakayinim. Rebbe Chanin Skanakayinim was talking about two levels of Tuma, a, um, a Shlishi together with a Rishon, and you were making it into a Shani. With me, dummy. How can you compare? Basam tummy with tummy. Hachatar with tummy. Here I have two two things of truma. One is tummy and one is tar. One's impure and one's pure. Yet we ever said that you can you can uh, burn them together? Never. Rabbi Chinnis Kanakayin never said that. He said two levels of tummy you could burn together. The Ella midiv Rabbi Akiva must be Rabbi Akiva. Does me dummy? Awesome puzzle with tummy. Hachatar with tummy. Over there. It was a shlishi, 
and you're burning it together with a with a avatama, possibly it's metal and it's becoming a a rishon. But nevertheless, it's pasul and tummy. It's not tar and tummy. Name a kasavar of mayor must listen to avatama derais of ladatama der abanan the derais of tar malia. So it's like this. Maybe the way Reb Meir is going to learn this Mishnah, he's going to learn these earlier opinions of Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Chinus Ganakainim, or Rabbi Chinus Ganakainim himself, himself, is that the, the, the original piece of meat, the higher level of Tumah, was Tame Midar Isa. The lower level of Tumah was Tame Midar Abanan, but it was really Tar Midar Isa. Uh, how is that possible? It goes like this. There's a din derabanan that um, that liquids can make a keli tummy. Usually, um, usually once it becomes a mission, once it goes to this level here, it can make a keli tummy. There's a din derabanan that liquids could make a keli tummy. It's a din derabanan that has to do with reiki, with uh, the spit of spit of a uh, of a zav. I'm sorry. Before I said that it's a, that the liquid of the zav, the fluids of the zav, are a mission. The fluids of the zav are really an avatama. I'm sorry, that's a mistake. Now, so but what what that would mean was that liquids could make a keli tummy. Liquids could make a keli tummy. Midrabanan. Not liquids of the zav. Any liquid midrabanan. Any liquid that's tummy. So maybe what we're saying over here is that I have. Uh, meat that became tummy because it touched the keli that was only tummy midirabana. And now that that meat is now being burnt with something that's tummy midiraisa. That on a deraisa level, I have tahar and tummy being burnt together. Oh, on a deraisa level, you can burn tar with tummy. That teaches me that on Arab Pesach, I can burn tar with tummy. I know midirabana in the both tummy, but on a deraisa level, it's tar with tummy. So midivrayim lamadna that I can do it together. My midivrayim. So what would be from their words? It goes like this. From the words of Rabbi Chinin Skanakainim. And Rashi explains that Truma Tahira, Truma that's tar in six hours, at the sixth hour, would be comparable to a Shlishi that's tar der Isa batami midirabanan. It's comparable to something that's tami midirabanan. It's really tar, but but your meat by Rabbi Chinin Skanakainim was also really tar midir Isa. So so this truma is also tar, tar midir isa, tar midir abana, but it has a, 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 a rabbinic tumma. In other words, we're comparing rabbinic tumma to the rabbinic law of you need to burn your chametz in the sixth hour. So the shlishi on, on the sixth day is tar midir abana. Yeah, the shlishi is tar midir abana. That's that's the way Reb Meir would learn. Um, no, because it's kachim, so we call it tar. Okay. I'm Reish Lakish. Reish Lakish gives another pshat. Mishum Bar Kapara, in the name of Bar Kapara, Masnisim Ba'avat Tamedar Aisa, Vladat Tamedar Aisa. Our mission is not talking about Dera Bonan, Tamedar Bonan. Our mission is dealing with Dera Aisa. Rabbi Chinim Skanakainim is dealing with Dera Aisa. Everything is Tame. The meat's Tame on one level, the other meat's Tame on, on another level, but it's all Midar Aisa. So how does Reb Meir get out of that, that I can burn tar with Tame? My Midivrayim, Midivrayim Rabbi Lezer Rabbi Yeshua. Midivrayim, from their words, were not introduced yet. Midivrayim, in other words, we, compi- we, we took two Mishnayas and we put it together. And why did we put, the, why we put it together? Because we were talking about burning two things together. So we took a Mishnah that has to do with, uh, with, with um, Tuma and Tara, and we put it together with a Mishnah that has to do with, with Pesach. But Midivrayim is not referring to the, to the, um, to the previous statements. Midivrayim is talking about some other machlekes. What's Which one? Hey, Rabbi Yeshua. Which Rabbi Yeshua are we dealing with? Ilay maha Rabbi Yeshua. Maybe you're dealing with the following Rabbi Yeshua. The Tanan is thought like this. If I have a barrel of, of truma, that means wine, probably, or oil, that there's a suffix tuma in this barrel. Why? Because someone tummy entered into that house. We don't know. Did he touch it? He was, in, he was here. We don't know if he touched the barrel. Rabbi Lezer, 
Rabbi Eliezer says that if this barrel was in an open place, you have to protect it. The fact that it's suffolk tame doesn't mean that it's tame. You have to protect it. If it was in a place of hefker, you have to put it in a place of, of garden. If it was open, you have to cover it. Rabbi Shua Imer, Rabbi Shua says exactly the opposite. If it was in an open place, you, if it was in a if it was in a closed place, you expose it, and if it was open, you you expose it, you you uh, take it out, let it get destroyed because it's a suffix. So what what does that mean? So for us also, we're gonna say. Since you can't eat it, this is since you can't eat it, you can all, all you can do is burn it. I have to go back, I have to add one pointer. Um, the basis of this machlaikis is it says Mishmeris Trumai Sai. Trumai Sai. Trumai Sai is my is, is a plural. But you could also read it Trumai Trumai Si. Which is a singular. The question is, do you read it the way it's written, or do you read it the way it's um, it's it's pronounced? So Rabbi Yeshua says that you read it the way it's written. Trumasi is the way it's written. Trumasi. So if that's the case, so then what what happened was Rabbi Eliezer says that I have to protect two types of trumas. I have to protect truma that's Tahar, and I also have to protect truma that's tluya, that's a suffix. I have to protect both of them. Why? Because there's a plural there. Rabbi Yeshua says, no, you only have to protect one of them. You only have to protect truma that's tar. You don't have to protect truma that's a suffix. So it's based on the way I, do I look at the words, the pronunciation, or do I look at the, um, at the, uh, at the, at the letters. Yeshem l'mesayrus, yeshem l'mikra. In English, we have this much like this also, because do I say, I'll see you in an a hour? Or do I say, I'll see you in an hour? Do I look at the way I pronounce hour, which is with a vowel sound? Then I should say, I see you in an hour. Or do I look at the way it's spelled, which is an H, which is a consonant, which would mean, I, I'll see you in a hour. It's a English grammar. Okay, but that's the same idea. What do I look at? The way it's pronounced or the way it's spelled? So what's going to come out over here is also that, according to Rabbi Yeshua, I have truma that's not necessarily tummy. And I have to protect it. No, according to Rabbi Lezer, I have to protect it. According to Rabbi Yeshua, I can expose it. And it's not necessarily tummy. So here also by us, we have chametz that's not tummy at all, and I'm allowed to just go ahead and burn it, right? And it's not, and possibly it's not tummy, it's just a practical issue that I have that I can't eat it, because it could be it's tummy. So here also I have a practical issue that I can't eat it. It's not tummy, it's just the hour. It's just the time, it's, it's the time of chametz. The Gemara says, me dummy, how can you compare? Hasam grama ba'al ma'achab yadayim. The Gemara doesn't compare the tummy aspect. The Gemara says, over there, you weren't being metameh. Over there, you weren't burning it. That over there, you were just exposing it. I don't have to protect it. Over here, you're taking it and you're burning it together. Here, you bought mamish being uh, metameh together. Whoever said that you can do that? It's not Rabbi Shua. Then midivrayim from the words of Rabbi Shua. Elaha Rabbi Shua has to be a different one. The Tanan was taught in the Mishnah. Chav shel chumish nishma begas el yaina. Okay. I have a wine press in the bottom uh, where all the wine is or the grapes or whatever that's being pressed over there it's chulen. On the top, there happened to be a barrel of wine that was truma and it's, the barrel cracks and the truma is going to fall in. Now, I only have a cup uh, to save it. I don't want the truma to fall down because the bottom is chulen at the tummy. Chulen tummy I could eat. I can eat mundane food that's tummy. And I can eat truma also if I'm a kayan. But the mixture of hul and tummy with truma, no one can eat. I can eat truma. 
I can eat shuma fine. I have no problem. And no regular shuma. And I can eat chulin uh-huh. that's tamay also. Uh, it's, it's not a problem. I just I, with a certain amount of food that I eat, I, I would have to use the mikvah or whatever. So um, or I can I, uh, Yisrael can for sure eat chulin that's tamay. You don't have to be careful unless you're eichen chulin betara. The problem is when these are going to mix, it's going to be an issue. So the, the barrel cracks, it's going to spill down. It's going to ruin all of the grapes and the press that's on the bottom because that's truma and this is tummy. So I can stick out a cup or a, another jug and catch the drip. The only thing is, the only thing that I have right here available is a tummy cup. So as it falls, it's going to become tummy, but it's going to cause a monetary loss. But I can stick out a cup and I could be metamet the adayim and I could protect myself from that loss. So, Everyone agrees that if you can rescue, then you rescue. I don't know why you even have to say that. Yeah. I think what he means is, I, what, um, yeah, you should, even part of it, that's what he means. It's even if you can't salvage everything, you should, uh, yeah, Rav gets a trophy. <laughs> even if you can't salvage everything, you should try to salvage whatever you can from, from becoming tummy. The imlav, now here's where we have a like this, thank you. If you can't salvage it, then Rebbe Lezer Oymer Tered V'Tetame V'Al Yitamena B'Yad. Rebbe Lezer says, you can't salvage it Batara. So it's going to go, now go down and spoil your chulin, that's tame, and no one's going to be allowed to eat it because it's going to become truma, which, which is now tame, a mixture of chulin and truma, which is called dimua. So Rabbi Eliezer's opinion is don't touch it. Don't make it tame yourself. Let it just happen on its own. Rabbi Shua says no. You can be metamit piyad. It's anyways falling into the into the chulin that's tame. You could put out a uh, a jug to catch it. So what do we see? That Rabbi Yeshua holds that you're allowed to be metamit something before it uh, before it becomes tame. The Gemara says, Yihachi, if that's the case, and now you're trying to tell me that I'm allowed to burn chametz that's tahar. This over here, I had truma that's tahar that's falling. You're allowed to burn um, chametz that's tahar. Truma, what was it? His words were Truma Tahira, Truma that's Chametz that's Tar, together with Truma Tmeya in the sixth hour in our Pesach. And we're learning it from Rabbi Shua. It's not from their words, it's from his words, because Rabbi Lazar doesn't hold of this. This is what it means. We learned from the Machlaikis. It's a, it's a a way of saying, we don't actually learn from both opinions. We learn from one opinion, but we call it from that machlaikis, we see that Rabbi Yeshua holds that you're allowed, and that's what we're going to learn from. And the proof is that if you read further in the Mishnah, it goes on and it says, that means that what, uh, what uh, Rabbi Meir was referring to was the machlaikis the machlaikas between Rabbi Lezer and Rabbi Shua. Okay, let's leave it right there and we'll continue tomorrow.